These are people that are fully invested in developing their ideas and trying to bring their ideas to market. They don't want to be thinking about banking. And so that's why we thought it was so important that we get our experienced business bankers into these spaces because we recognize that they think differently and we need to bank them differently. You hear background noise, there's a reason why. Yeah, <laughs> we're coming to you for an event that's brought to you by Investors Bank and Saul Freeman and Company, all about understanding the bank's perspective. And right now I have the distinct honor of interviewing Bill Brown, the Director of Retail Banking at Investors Bank. Bill, thank you so much for joining me here on Mind Your Business. Thank you for having me, and congratulations on the Nielsen success. Thank you, thank you, it's pretty cool. We came in number three just a, a couple months ago. Last month, last month was number five, Eh, we'll take it. It's in the top ten. <laughs> but thank you so much. Um, you know, let me go in, and it's okay if I can ask you anything? Of course. What's of course. your social security? I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm not going to ask. I'm not an idiot. You don't ask someone from the bank. Okay. <laughs> and let's talk about Investors Bank. Your business banking teams are reaching out to serve the growing number of businesses that are based in co-working offices. You know, how are your executive ex executives assisting those particular, it's really a fascinating concept that's come on the scene, especially over the last 24 months. How is your bank you know, interacting with that? Yeah, in a nutshell, you know, our, our idea is that we take the bank to these uh, co-working spaces, mm -hmm. that these are, many of these folks are entrepreneurial in nature. They work different hours. They've chosen by being in these uh, co-working spaces, they obviously are looking at a different business model for their franchises mm -hmm. and so as a bank we recognize that we have the opportunity to go to them and um, advice and counsel the, these are folks that are not necessarily interested in the speed of a banking transaction they're people that are looking for uh, honest advice mm -hmm. for experience for individuals that have been working in the financial services industry to help guide them in making the right decisions on how they grow or continue to grow their businesses. These are people that are fully invested in developing their ideas and trying to bring their ideas to market. They don't want to be thinking about banking. And so that's why we thought it was so important that we get our experienced business bankers into these spaces because we recognize that they think differently and we need to bank them differently. It's fascinating. It's really thinking out of the box to connect yeah. with these people. Yeah, because you know exactly you would right. think, you know, okay, I'm going to go to a brick and mortar, an established operation, but here you're getting in almost on the ground level with yeah. these people that yeah. will be, some of them will make, will hit it big. Yeah, and an interesting aside, we've even coached our bankers. Don't look like a banker, you know, dress cool. the way that these people dress, cool. so that you know you're so in this smart. environment. So some, be make, part of make them. Make them feel comfortable and be part of that community. Investors has developed an advisory board of influential business leaders who are located across the New York, New Jersey area. What is the role of the members on the advisory board? And, and how do they, how does the board you know, help the bank build useful relationships with businesses and companies? Yeah, these business leaders, they have a shared passion with us for uh, building their communities, not just their business community, but the civic community, their towns, their neighborhoods. And, and that's our passion too. And so these, we, we reach out to business leaders who we think are like-minded, who recognize that through their networks, through their influence, with the bank's backing, we can help them make their businesses, make their communities, make their neighborhoods better because investors are involved. And we don't ask for anything in return. We're not looking for them um, to be bankers, we're looking for people who can help tell the investor's story to the community about what we're willing to do in terms of our giving back, whether it's through our sponsorships, our marketing dollars, our volunteer initiatives, our lending, you name it. Um, we're looking for people that can really be uh, voices, that can increase sort of um, our range out in the community to help tell our story. You know, Bill, more, you're a youthful guy with a lot of experience. <laughs> you're very generous. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm good. Well, let's talk social media, right? Sure. It's here to stay. You know, many regional banks are connecting with, you know, present and potential clients by using social media channels. You know, say LinkedIn or some other channels, you know, to connect. How has investors wrapped their head around that in terms of that space? Yeah, it's interesting you bring that up uh, tonight because we are uh, right now talking about a relationship with LinkedIn in which we partner with LinkedIn 
uh, to help our business owners, our business clients, uh, uh, promote their businesses and get the word out about their businesses better. And that's not something that banks traditionally do. But uh, as you said, this idea of social media is expanding. And you know, the number one word I think about when I think about the social media is content. Right. There's a lot of noise in social media. Right. And I think it's important for us as investors to make sure that we're not part of the noise, but rather are providing content, valuable content to business owners, to communities. And so we're thrilled with our partnership with LinkedIn to be able to start to help business owners um, grow their business in a different way in social media. Now this next question really is you know, part of the previous question, but that is you know, the business banking sector is rapidly changing. Right? How is your bank, investors, looking ahead to anticipate and meet the changing needs of your business clients? Yeah, it's, we spend a lot of time uh, doing client research, client focus groups. In fact, uh, you know, the very event that the background noise is going on, we mm -hmm. have the opportunity through uh, nights like tonight to be able to talk to business owners and find out really what's on their mind. And obviously we keep an eye on our competition um, for what's going on out there, but mm -hmm. more importantly, I don't want to keep pace with our competition. I want to keep pace with our client expectations. Nice. And so we are really uh, spend a lot of time talking to our clients about where they are in their business life cycle. What are the kinds of products and services they're looking for? What are their sort of hopes and dreams for how they grow their business? A and of course, you know, you mentioned uh, as the lead in social media, we're keenly tuned in to what's happening in social media so that we're abreast of what our clients might be hearing or seeing to make sure that we can help them answer questions, introduce products, introduce services, and demystify financial services for them. You know, the, uh, the folks listening to the show have, have come to expect us to have great guests on. Recently we had the CEO of Dale Carnegie, Joe Hart, yep. and many other great guests, and Bill, you're, you know, having you on keeps my ratings up. <laughs> I'm blushing. It's thank, true. thank you for having me. I love the honor of interviewing C level executives and sharing their great advice and perspective on Mind Your Business. I'd love to get your feedback. Post it in the comments below and subscribe. You'll never miss an edition of Mind Your Business.